Geek 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 presents Stories for Children! The story of Makhan Shah and Guru Tegh Bahadur Saab. There once was a rich merchant named Makhan Shah. He was sailing on a large ship on the ocean, transporting merchandise from one port to another, when a furious storm broke out. The ship was thrown around on the savage sea. Masts were broken. Sailors were thrown overboard. Enormous waves hit the ship. Makhan Shah realized that the storm was going to sink the ship. He began to pray to God and all saints to help save his man and his ship. In vain, the storm continued to rage. Finally, he said, If there is a light on the altar of Guru Nanak, May it come to my help. I promise a gift of 500 gold pieces if our lives are spared. All of a sudden, the storm stopped and the ocean became calm. The ship and all the sailors were saved. Makhan Shah was very grateful. He knew in his heart that his prayer to the Sikh Guru had saved him. He thought, I have made a promise and now I must keep it. The Guru saved me. I promised him 500 gold pieces in my prayer. I must now find him to give him his due. And so, he immediately went to Amritsar, where he thought the Guru lived. No, good sir, someone said. The Guru lives in the town of Bakala. And so Makhan Shah and all his men left for the town of Bakala. When they arrived there, he asked, Excuse me, which house does the holy Sikh Guru live in? Where can I meet him and touch his lotus feet? Well, uh, uh, actually, well, he, he lives, sir. We, we ourselves do not know. There are 26 men who claim to be the new gurus. All are of the Sodi family. Each one could be the guru. They all look and talk very holy. But we cannot tell which one is which. So we treat each one of them as the Guru. You should just go and bow before every one of them. Then you will be sure to meet the one true Guru. What? said Makhan Shah. Twenty-six pretenders? What shall I do? I owe my Guru five hundred gold pieces for saving me. But I am no fool to split twelve thousand five hundred gold pieces among twenty-five phonies. This will not do. Makhan Shah decided he would use a little trickery. He went to bow before each guru, dressed in very fine clothes, accompanied by several servants. To each guru, he offered five gold pieces. The real guru will know who I am and ask me for the rest. The fake gurus will be quite happy to get five gold pieces. And so he went from Guru to Guru to Guru to Guru, all 26 of them. Not one of the pretenders said anything to him regarding the missing 495 gold pieces. Makhan Shah knew that the real Guru was not among these men. 
Yet everyone had assured him the true Guru lived in Bakala. Very unhappy, but not giving up hope, Makhan Shah asked, Isn't there someone else? One other holy person? One other who lives in this town? Uh, no, 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 they said. There isn't. This is it. Twenty-six. Isn't that enough? One more. No, no, no. Uh, well, maybe. There is a fellow who lives on the hill. He is from the Guru's family, but he never sees anybody. He hides out. He's not the Guru. Well, I'll check him out anyway. I must keep looking till I find the true Guru. I must honor my promise. And so, Bhai Makhan Shah walked up the hill to the house of a man named Teg Bahadur. Teg Bahadur was the son of Guru Hargobind. He loved God very much and he had spent 22 years meditating. He would spend up to 17 hours a day meditating on God in a little underground cell so as to be alone with God away from the thoughts and distractions of the world. His wife, Mata Gujri, would often meditate with him. When Makhan Shah arrived at Baba Teg Bahadur's house, he met the Baba's wife. Hello, kind lady. Could you please help me? Yes, how? I must pay my respects to the Baba who lives here. I'm sorry. He's not available. He does not want to be disturbed. He is meditating and I cannot interrupt him. Please, kind lady, I beg of you. I am sorry, Sir Traveler, but I cannot help you. But, but... Mata Gujri walked away, leaving Makhan Shah frustrated. But he decided to stay and wait for an opportunity to see the Baba. Finally, when Gujri brought her husband a pitcher of milk for his meal, the trap door opened. Makhan Shah began yelling and calling out, Babaji! Oh, Babaji! Hello, Baba! Who is it that disturbs my peace? Said Baba Teg Bahadur. It is I, said the merchant. Makhan Shah, the businessman. I am visiting all the holy men of this town, touching their feet to obtain a blessing from God. And so saying, he ran up to the Baba, bowed to him, and placed five gold pieces at his feet. Hey, Makhan Shah, is this how you keep your word? My shoulders are still hurting from holding up your ship in the storm, and you only give me five gold pieces when you promised 500. Oh my God, said Makhan Shah. Guruji, I have at last found you. Please forgive me. Here, please, take these 500 pieces. Oh my God, I was only testing you as I have tested 26 others today in the hope of finding you. I am yours. Please bless me, O oh my Guru. He then got up and ran, laughing and yelling. He ran up the stairs up to the roof of the house and yelled out, I found the Guru! I found the Guru! I found the Guru! What? The Guru? The Guru? Yes. I found the Guru! What? What is he saying? What is he saying? What the, the Guru? I found the Guru! The word spread in the town like wildfire. Many people were happy. Others were surprised. Twenty-six holy businessmen were neither happy nor surprised. They were furious. Several of them, led by a man named Dhirmal, ran up to Guru Teg Bahadur's house, armed with sticks, swords and muskets. They even tried to shoot Makhan Shah from the roof to quiet him down. Some time later, they burst into the Guru's house. Already, many were coming to visit Guru Teg Bahadur and to touch his holy feet. For the Guru had decided that it was time to come out, to come out of his meditation, 
to work for the Dharma, to serve the Sad Sangat. Dhirmal and his men were jealous of the Guru's fame and of all the money and the presents he was receiving. They forced their way into his house. They ran into the room where Guruji was sitting with some friends and visitors. There he is! There he is! Come! Someone shot at the Guru. Oh. But he was only wounded. Then, Dhirmal's men stole everything they could from the Guru's house, leaving him for dead. And they ran away. Oh, Guruji, are you all right? Oh, my God. Why, Guru, said Guru Teg Bahadur. It's all right. I will be fine. It's not serious. Oh, Guruji, they have stolen all your precious rugs, your books, your utensils, your possessions. Oh, it does not matter. Let them go. It means nothing. I forgive them. God will take care of it. Makhan Shah had been away on business. When he came back, he heard Dirmal had tried to kill the Guru and that he had stolen many precious possessions belonging to the Guru. And so Makhan Shah gathered his soldiers and they immediately went to Dirmal's house. Dirmal locked the door. Open up! Open up! No! They broke it down and burst in. They took back all of the Guru's things which had been stolen and even took some of Dirmal's. They also captured the man who had tried to kill the Guru. Then they went back to the Guru's house. The man who had shot at the Guru fell at his feet. Forgive me, Holy Sir. Forgive me, please. You are forgiven. Go in peace, brother. Let him go. What? But Guruji? Let him go. I forgive him. I want him to be freed. Well, or if, you, if you say so. They let the man go. Thank you. Thank you, kind sir. Oh, please forgive me. And then the man ran off, thanking God for the mercy and the kindness of Guru Teg Bahadur. Makhan Shah, said the Guru, I hear you have taken some of Dirmal's possessions by force. Well, Guruji, that is not right. Return them all, now. Yes, sir. Makhan Shah and his men went back to Dirmal's house. Go away! Leave us alone! And they returned Dirmal's things. However, they had taken from Dirmal the Adi Grant, the original Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib, which contained all the songs of the Gurus. When they came back, the Guru saw that his Sikhs were still filled with anger for Dirmal and his men. And so he said, O oh my Sikhs, never let anger enter your hearts. Anger is your worst enemy. When a man is angry, he loses his senses. He becomes mad. He cannot tell what is right and what is wrong. His life becomes a hell. Do not become angry. Be kind, merciful, and calm. Forgive. Forgive. Forgiveness is a great virtue. Whenever you can, forgive others. Do not be revengeful. Leave it all to God. Worship Him. Sing to Him. Pray to Him. He will bless you. But the enemies of the Guru would not leave Him alone. Let us leave this place, said Guru Teg Bahadur. We shall go to Kiratpur. And so they left. On the way to Kiratpur, the Guru saw the Adi Grant 
being carried by some of his Sikhs. And he said, What is this? Uh, this is the Granth Sahib, Guruji. What? I told you to return all of Dirmal's things. But sir, you are the Guru. It belongs to you. No. You took it from his house. You must return it. And so, Makhun Shah obeyed the Guru's command, and he returned the Adi Gran to Dirmal. Thus began the reign of Guru Tegh Bahadur, the Revengeless One, the son of Guru Hargobind, and the father of Guru Gobind Singh. Why Guruji ka Khalsa? Why Guruji ki Fateh? Subscribe.